Hey everybody, before we jump right into the action, I just wanted to let you know that these things are streamed on Twitch and if you want to hang out with me while I'm live, you can follow the channel, will be the first link in the description. We're getting the black pieces and when I'm going for E4, gonna be trying out another car. C9 F3, I guess this one will be more about the exchange, so there you have it. Entering the Carlsbad structure, this is what we have on the board and... It's mainly going to be about the minority attack. I expect either knight c3 or bishop b5. Let's see if I'm right. Okay, we see bishop b5 and against this specific move. You could do bishop g4, that's fine. But I like even queen a5 a bit better. Forcing knight c3 because the knight is actually a bit misplaced on that square in the Carlsbad structure and then we just get to continue in normal fashion. With e6, knight f6, bishop e7, just play this kind of stuff. Could also do bishop d6, it depends. And there's a lot of fun whenever they're playing h3. When the knight is on c3, oh, okay, so this is pretty tricky actually, because if I play e6, opponent has a trap with knight takes on d5. Because on queen b5, there's knight c7. This is actually pretty well known. So important to do rook c8, so that on knight e5, queen b5, Knight c7 won't work because it's covered. There is apparently no useful discovery for him. And I could just uh, keep on developing. Just doing e6, I think. Yeah, just double checking, but looks fine. On h3, as I was saying, like as a rule of thumb, when the knight is on c3, we can always just kind of take. Yeah, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go for it right away. And after queen takes, I think just knight f6. Again, there seems to be no useful discovery for my opponent because knight e5 can just pick up the bishop. And on bishop g5, trying to take this, there seems to be bishop e7, that's good enough. Same theme, knight e5, okay. This time doesn't make any sense because there's no longer the bishop there. So we can chill. And we're ready to castle on the next move. After we do that... We're going to be about to launch the minority attack where a6, b5, if they they they're taking on c6, <laughs> if they are taking on c6, gosh, I can't speak. Sorry for that. <laughs> okay, on rookie one, what is his threat? His threat is to take and then knight e5 or maybe queen d5 because I'm pinned. Need to castle and we're just fine. Now, basically, white ends up in a position with no plan. We're gonna be going e6 in case he takes. Wanna be taking with a rook, because we're having pressure on the file. And yeah, rook d1, pretty logical, protecting this pawn. Gonna do a6, hitting the bishop. Expecting them to either take or retreat. Those are like the two options. And, okay, let's see. Okay, bishop a4, I don't think that's a great move because of b5 and bishop is kind of, Restricted a bit on b3. I think he should have picked another square because now this is kind of how the hillbilly attack bishop ends up being. So on bishop to b3, I'm thinking to just reroute my queen to b6. Not necessarily because I'm threatening knight takes, but more so I'm opening path for the minority attack and maybe knight a5, knight c4 idea. So. If I want to go knight a5, the only thing that's kind of bothering me is whether he has bishop d5. And then there could be some weird tactics. But I think on bishop d5 we have rook c3 intermezzo. Because like point is knight a5, bishop d5. If I take with a pawn, like my bishop would be undefended. That's the point. And okay, on that I can take the free pawn. And that probably just wins. Do we want to go for the easy win? I think we want that. So, knight d4, queen e3 is gonna be like for sure his move. He can play bishop c5, but that allows him to double up my structure. So, I, I'm not sure I wanna allow that actually. So, I think I'm gonna play a pretty strange move. I just want to have this protected, and I'm considering this move. What do you guys think about rook e8? 
Because I really want to go for this. And okay, I mean, for sure he won't see this. For like 95. I mean, kind of even if he does, there is rook c3 that wins now. Yeah, I think let's just do knight a5. Because on bishop takes, I can't take with a pawn because he takes. And also, like, I can't take with a knight because of knight takes. And then he drops this. But if he would have gone for like this, I have rook c3 intermezzo and pawn takes knight e5. Which is way too minus for the rook. And on knight a5, uh, sorry for the millions of arrows. If they take this way, it's just bad because of knight e5 and we hit that. So he's forced to go there, but now knight c4 just uh, seems to be working much better. Threatening knight b2, I think. Hitting the pawn. So expecting bishop takes and we always take it with a rook. Putting pressure on that file. And okay, let's see what opponent has in mind now. Okay, he plays b3, but now this drops the a3 pawn. I think we're just gonna be taking it. Could also go knight d6 and knight e4 ideas. Just go a bit more positional, but I think the free material should be taken now. And just look at the bishop. That's just a funny pawn. That's just a pretty funny taller pawn on a2. Gonna be picking up the c2 pawn next and uh, either rook, d4 is weak. This knight also is super soft now. c queen d3. I could do bishop b4 just pinning this guy. Could also go for a small trick with uh, knight c2 and b4. Uh, many, many tempting options. So I could do knight c2, queen c7. That's like pretty clean, feels like. Yeah, gonna go for it. Also could do b4 right away because of knight, like knight a4, rook c2, knight b6, rook a2. Win back the piece, but I just think queen c7 is kind of cleaner. And then, can he actually go for like tricks? Like let's say I go there, rook c1 and b4. Can he go like knight d5 kind of tricks? That also shouldn't be underestimated, maybe. So I'll perhaps have to just go b4 and go for that extra pawn end game. As sad as this might be. So yeah, queen c7 actually, I think he has a lot of tricks involving after rook c1. Maybe rook c1, bishop a3 is precise, but okay. Wanna keep it simple, just b4. I think this is just the simplest regaining the piece. I think that's sort of only try for my opponent. Otherwise, everything is else is just resignable. Knight a4 only decent move. But rook c2, knight b6, rook a2. Okay, after this, pick up the frequent. And yeah, should be a pretty easy win from now. If opponent plays this one on. But I think typically this is sort of like a model game. At least all the way to knight c4. This is really how you want to get your pieces against this exchange line when they have knight on c3. This is kind of really like ideal setup that we got. And in the game, now, okay, we're going to be playing this for quite a bit. Um, I guess rook b2. Hitting pawn on b3. Keeping an eye on the bishop. And let's see. Also, idea is to push this pawn. Okay, we see rook d3. Could bring the rook over, occupy the open file. Just activating all my pieces and... All right, as a, as a plan from now on, we definitely need to get a knight involved. Bishop's kind of pinned. So maybe do h6 on the next move. Try to unpin it. If bishop h4... Okay, maybe then... g5, bishop g3, knight e4. This is not necessarily, like, typical to play g5, but because we are upper queen, definitely works. <laughs> So, okay, rook g3 is trying something. He's, 
you know, he's he's got something. And what does he got? He's got 95. Getting this, initiating trades, allowing him to take 27 cards off. I think rookie 2 might be nice intermezzo and... I'm gonna pick up the free bishop. Controlling all squares. That's like pretty normal when you're up a queen. And yeah, like... Could continue with rook e2, rook c1 next. Alright, he goes for the Greek gift. Gonna take those. And yeah, so could still do this. Alright, let's just play queen d6 first and gonna do rook e2 on the next move. Just covering this square, so... Can set up a nice little trick with uh, rook e2. He might play g4 the way I know my opponents. I think he's gonna try to push king's pawn here. Oh, never mind. He played a knight. Played a knight. Gonna be taking. And I don't see how he's willing to stop the checkmate threat. And I think we're about to get this game in after Queen takes on G2. So get a checkmate on the board. Um. All right. So I wonder whether knight a5 was like best move or not, because it looked like. Pretty thematic, but I wasn't super sure whether it's actually good. So apparently computer says what? Like B5 was a mistake? How is that like ever a mistake? <laughs> How is B5 ever a mistake, dude? No, just give me a break. So. Queen B6, slightly better. Knight A5, and now it was all about this move. And now, as I was telling you guys, it's important to have rook c3. I really calculated this thing down. Because if you don't have rook c3, then that's like very, can get very ugly. Because as I was saying, this rook e7 is bad. And if I take it with a knight, he's not going to be taking there, but on d5. Tempo. And after this, he just wins the pawn. So I was really preparing this motive to sacrifice. Okay, when they go bishop d5 to sack. And after whatever he takes with, I'm gonna go knight d5. In the queen, or in case he takes this way, knight protects the bishop, and we have uh, two minors for the rook with so many weak pawns. This should be an easy win. And okay, after bishop a2, I think the rest is um, pretty simple. Yeah, after knight c4 in particular, position is very bad, like rook b1. If that gets played, just pawn on d4 drops. So. Uh, okay. I think that was it for this game. Hey everybody, thanks a lot for making it this far into the video. And if you're interested in uh, checking out my London system course, will be the first link uh, in the description. So thanks again, and I'll see you around on the channel. Take care.